disturbing story out of Kenya that we've been following very closely. More than 300 bodies have been found in shallow graves in a forest, and authorities say scores of mass graves are yet to be uncovered. Most of the victims were followers of a controversial pastor who is now in police custody. His followers were allegedly brainwashed into believing that starvation was their ticket to salvation. CNN's David McKenzie traveled to the area. He joins us live now from Johannesburg. So, David, even though the pastor, Pastor McKenzie, is, is being held at this point in time, um, the psychological wounds for, yes, the family members of the victims, but also the community at large will take a very long time uh, to heal. Just walk us through what was said by the people you spoke to. Well, certainly the wounds will be there for a long time and the true scale of this horror hasn't even yet been fully uncovered Zane. and to sort of describe how long it will take 65 of the followers of this cult are still refusing to eat they believe that the pastor uh, held their ticket to salvation and that salvation was the way to get there and i must warn some viewers uh, that the themes and images in the story could be disturbing he called it the wilderness, luring his flock to a remote corner of Kenya. We've come to try and understand how over many months so many could die. In the Shakahola forest, the dead are still being found. Forensic teams carefully remove the remains of members of a Christian death cult from shallow graves. They have already unearthed more than 300 people, many of them children, many showing signs of starvation. It's painful. It was so painful. It was so painful. Yeah, this is my daughter. Francis Wanje says his daughter and son-in-law both abandoned good jobs and took their children to the forest cult. What happened next is hard to comprehend. Everybody should die and to meet Jesus. And they have to start with the children. The members of the cult, including your own family, yes. they were starving the children. Yes. And then when the children didn't die quickly enough... They suffocated them. They suffocated. They suffocated them, yes. And this is your own blood. And I wonder where my children or my child, my daughter, could change to be such an animal, a world animal, to kill her own children. Pastor Paul McKenzie began his cult in Melindi. This is the church where Pastor McKenzie had a huge following in his sermons. He amplified his message online. He preached a doomsday prophecy for at least a decade, calling on the faithful to reject modern society, pull children from school, avoid hospitals. He demanded total devotion. You must deny yourself. You must reject yourself. You must reach a point of ending your life, he says, for the sake of Jesus. His anti-government stance got him arrested and detained, but never prosecuted. In 2019, the church was closed down. Later, the pastor started his forest community. We found a former cult member in Melindi. We agreed to hide her identity for her own safety. She escaped the forest last year. Why did you move your whole home and all your children and move into the forest? The pastor used to call me, she says. He was calling me, telling me, my daughter, you are being left behind. And when the ark is closed, it will be too late. So I decided to go. When the COVID pandemic hit, she says many saw it as evidence that the prophecies were real. Mackenzie charged her family $80 for a piece of land in Galilee. There were seven other biblically named settlements in Shakahola, with more than a thousand followers, she says. Still, cult members made regular trips to a nearby village for food and water. In December, those trips suddenly stopped, says this village elder. The starvation had begun. He says they alerted authorities, but they did nothing. Even after hungry children started escaping to the village. What's been called the Shakahola massacre has shocked this nation. 
Pastor Mackenzie and his closest followers are being held under terror laws. What happened in the forest with your followers? I can tell nothing about that because I've been in custody for two months. So I don't know what is going outside there. Have you been there? Francis Wanje says there needs to be justice. He mounted a rescue mission to get his grandchildren out. When they found his grandson Ephraim, he was close to salvation. His two brothers were already dead. He went to hell. He went to hell. I'm telling you. In fact, when he was rescued, he told them that uh, if you could come here, maybe let a bit let, you already find me had already gone to see Jesus because the grave is there. The very highest levels of the Kenyan government have apologized for their inaction and the pain it has caused. The scale of what happened in the forest is still being understood. Hundreds are still missing and many more mass graves need to be exhumed. David McKenzie is with me again. Now, I mean, the fact that this could happen, I mean, that video was so distressing. The fact that this could happen really does beggar belief, David. How much has this prompted soul searching among Kenya's leaders, especially because of their inaction, as you point out in your piece? It has prompted a great deal of soul searching, uh, Zane, and certainly the president, the interior ministers and others, as I said, have apologized for that inaction. Now, on the ground, many people were frustrated that they had warned the authorities, they'd warned the police. There were strange things happening in that forest and it needed to be investigating. It ended up being Francis and private rescue mission that uh, seemed to have unearthed this properly for the first time. And there is this awkward juxtaposition here. Uh, William Ruto, the country's president, is the first evangelical president in the country. Faith is very central to his rule. And of course, no one is suggesting that uh, that pastors will go to these lengths. But many people I spoke to uh, said that they feel there needs to be more regulation of uh, the religious sector in Kenya. They say that there are pastors who are taking advantage of people every day, uh, separating them from their well-earned money, uh, promising things that they can't actually deliver. This, of course, allegedly what happened is a far more extreme case. And I think it should be placed into the context of the worst mass suicides that we have seen globally for many years now. And the cult following that this man allegedly developed is in line with previous instances of these kind of cults uh, in the global context. But really, there is going to be a lot of soul searching and uh, people are calling for regulations and to protect Kenyans uh, from these kind of leaders, uh, these kind of religious leaders. Zane?